Good morning, thank you for tuning in. Now, sorry I haven't been around for a while, but I've been extremely busy with my book and managing my back issues, so that had to take priority. But all the pre-orders have now been fulfilled. I've had some fantastic feedback, which has been really nice uh, after all the hard work that's gone into it. So if you haven't got yourself a copy yet, then please take a look at my website. Your support is very much appreciated. If you enjoy woodland at all, and I'm sure you'll enjoy the book. Um, and it's certainly something that I'm very proud of. Uh, so yeah, please take a look. Um, now this morning, I find myself very fortunately in a beautiful misty woodland, one of my favorite local spots. I was here yesterday, different conditions, but I did make a couple of images, which I think have some promise. So I might include those at some point. But this morning I've spotted a scene which I haven't photographed before. And what originally drew me to it was those lovely Marcesson oak leaves there. Now I love marcescent leaves, not just because aesthetically they're pleasing, but I just love the word <laughs> marcescent, which is the name given to the leaves that linger on deciduous trees such as the oak and beech trees. And they hold on right through winter until they drop in early spring. And they make a lovely contrast, those lovely rich crispy oranges against that green moss, which is glowing really quite nicely just from the very soft light coming through the foggy canopy. So it's a lovely characterful tree and my original intention when I spotted it, I thought, well, I'll include the wall, don't really have much choice, and have that kind of under the arch of the tree and just disappearing into the distance there. Now, typically I don't really like man-made objects in my woodland photography, but an old wall like this, that doesn't really serve any purpose. It has some character, it's got the mossy stone, it's quite pleasant. However, it, there is still, you know, it's looking very intact. Um, and a big part of the image there. So that could be perceived as a bit of a barrier, which bothers me a little bit. So I started to step back and then over on the left hand side, there's a gap in the wall. And then right through the middle of that gap is a more slender oak tree in the distance there. And I think that's just a really nice feature. It's just, a, it just adds that little bit of extra depth, another component in the image. Everything's anchored with the less characterful oak tree on the right hand side. But then because we've got this fantastic gesture and flow from right to left, creates this really nice interaction with a slender oak tree back there. And it kind of reminds me of, I don't know, like a film like Stardust, where there's this wall that you mustn't cross. Even though there's a gap there, which you can easily climb over, and there's people that want to be with each other either side, but you can't cross it. It kind of feels like that. These trees want to be together. Um, but yeah, they're not allowed. See what, see what you make of that. Hopefully the mist will linger for a while. It's a little bit thin up there, but a little bit thicker down in the valley. So we'll see what else we can find. As I said, I was out yesterday as well, but I wasn't filming, I was just out with the camera and I spotted something which I was incredibly excited about. It's something extremely rare. I've never seen it before in all the years I've been wandering woodland. I've spoke to other nature lovers who have never ever seen this in person. And it's something called hair ice, also known as candy floss ice or frost beard. It's a very odd phenomenon and it's fantastic to see. Um, and the reason why it's so rare is because it requires some very particular conditions for it to happen. So I just took some 
phone snapped some video clips which I put on Instagram which I'll put up on screen now. As you can see it's very peculiar, it doesn't even look like ice. You need wet rotting wood, you need a temperature just below zero, you need a lot of moisture in the air and you also need the presence of a particular fungus inside the wood as well. And I think what happens is that water inside the rotting wood freezes and it creates a barrier which traps liquid between the ice and the pores of the wood and this kind of creates a suction effect and you get these very fine strands of ice which are then pushed out creating these wonderful delicate formations but the reason why it needs this fungus as well because I think it's believed that it acts as an inhibitor which stabilizes the ice and just creates these wonderful delicate structures I picked some up it's incredibly soft and it just melted away in my hand uh, it's fantastic to see but I wanted to share that it was just in isolated patches there was no frost on the floor here because of under the shelter of the trees but this hair ice this frost bead was still able to form absolutely amazing stuff uh, so yeah keep your eyes peeled I'd love for you to uh, to spot it if you have spotted it let me know leave a comment below I'm gutted it wasn't here again today because I wanted to do some video clips and take some photographs but yeah, keep your eyes peeled, fascinating stuff. I keep getting drawn back to these trees here which you might recall I photographed in a previous episode. We've got some oak trees, some alder down in the valley there, rowan tree, hazel, even some bur cherry back there. So there's, there's a wonderful combination of species. But there's an important point to be made there which is worth reiterating and that is that there's a huge amount of benefit to revisiting the same scene season to season, year in, year out, not just because of the valuable learning process in getting to know the trees and how they behave and change through the seasons but also in terms of identifying any changes and development in yourself and how you interpret a particular scene I still photograph things now which I first photographed six years ago and there's a lot of satisfaction wrapped up in that not just not just in terms of the long-term relationship and connection with both subject and place but being able to go to a scene which you're quite familiar with and spot something new and just really fine tune your attention to detail and come up with something which is even better than what you've done in the past. Um, but everything that you've learned through that time as well and that time that it's taken. Yeah, I mean, it's something that I, I, I recommend. It, it certainly benefits me in any way in both uh, fulfillment and learning as well. This particular scene, it does have some problems because the or challenges should I say the oak tree on the right hand side if we include that then it does create this almost empty space down at the bottom right hand corner there's some leaf litter some ferns and detail down there but it probably feels quite empty compared to the complexity of everything else and it's that variety of species that's really adding to that complexity but I like that I like to embrace that and embrace that scruff I mean, I mean maybe I could just put Meg down there she'd fill that space in quite nicely um, now the mist has now lifted. I did make an image while the mist was still lingering here. There's a little touch of warm light coming in as the sun was just desperately trying to break through the fog and there's a little bit of blueness from the sky over on this side so that was quite a nice combination. So yeah I think there's a lot more to do with this scene. I do want to see it through the different seasons um, and just try different angles but I just feel as if there's potential here so uh, yeah. I don't know whether today's rendition is a good example, but uh, it, it's, certainly, uh, it's certainly worthwhile, worthwhile doing.
Right, that's me done. Time to head home and get warmed up. Like I said, my book is available. It's in stock, it's ready to go. Please take a look. It is a fantastic way to support this channel. It is really gonna help me free up time to concentrate on some new projects next year as well. Um, but yeah, I think you really will enjoy it. I'm, I'm really very happy with it, so please take a look. I will talk about it in more depth in a future episode. Um, but until then, thank you very much for watching this one, and I hope to see you again very soon. I was all packed up and ready to go, but then I noticed a shift in the light and the mist started to lift. I could see bits of blue sky. There's a little bit of mist still lingering. It was very moist in the end and the sun started to break through. So I thought I've got to linger for a bit longer and just see what happens. So I just quickly show you a bonus image here. You could probably see the flare of light above my head there as the sun starts to set on the opposite side of the valley. And then what it's doing is it's hitting the trees. It's completely clear that up there now but the sunlight is hitting the trees, it's reflecting warm light on some of these foreground trees, just enough to illuminate the detail and add a bit of warmth to the bark, the marcescent leaves, the mosses coming through, and all that is set against a very, very cool blue backdrop. It's a wonderful contrast. It's something that I always look for in the autumn time, but because we've still got that lingering hint of autumn, it's working really well now. Um, I've taken a couple of options here, square crop, 4x5, nice little arrangement, I quite like it, working with that contrast of colour, nice little bonus image, so uh, yeah, see what you think of that. <laughs>